So let's get started on time. Why don't we? Okay, so today is week five, Twitter prospecting. Uh, this is, I think, a very interesting topic and something that people I find know the least about. Uh, so in thinking through our social media training pillars, of course, still on this conversation, how do we engage? How do we uh, respond to people? And so today we're going to talk about how do you figure out who's listening to you? How do you figure out what they're interested in? And so Twitter has this great way to find out through their analytics platform. There's two ways to find uh, the analytics platform. Uh, way one, and this is only available on desktop view. This is not available through your Twitter app. Uh, the first way is you just click on your profile here at the top of your desktop when you're logged in. And you get this drop down, and so analytics is one of the choices. If you do not see it there, it is possibly because you have a uh, brand new account, and so you don't have enough data yet for this to pop up. But a way around that is just log into Twitter and then go to this website, uh, analytics.twitter.com, and see uh, what pops up because a lot of times I find that people don't uh, yet have the analytics button, but you can still get there uh, by going here. Now, again, if, you, if you're just new to Twitter and you only have six followers, then you probably don't have this yet, uh, but it will come as your account grows. So let's hop over here and take a look at all of the things that this provides for us. So we're gonna go to our profile here. We're gonna go to analytics. And that brings us to our summary screen. Okay, so the summary screen is super helpful to get an overview of what's going on um, from a month to month basis with your account. Okay, so the first thing you see is a 28 day summary. And it tells you how many tweets you've sent in the last 28 days and the percentage is it greater or less than the previous 28 days. The next thing that Twitter tells you is impressions. I think this is something that's very interesting to pay attention to because your impressions count is the quantity of eyeballs that have seen your stuff. So remember, we have these very easy to track uh, metrics of what happens on Twitter with likes, retweets, um, you know, getting followed. That's very easy to tell. What is less easy to tell is how many people are reading your stuff and not interacting with it. So this is what, what the impressions count is, and you're going to probably be pleasantly surprised with how high it is, because this account, I think it only has about 1,500 followers maybe, and you can still, you can see how many people have seen the content above and beyond those followers, so that's pretty cool. Now, I think a couple of weeks ago we talked about, you know, when you're updating your, your Twitter profile, it's important to look good because people visit your profile. So just in the last 28 days, over 550 people have visited the profile of Juice Plus Helper to check it out. Whether or not, again, they followed it, I don't know. Uh, but that's important to note. People are checking you out. And then mentions is how many times somebody's done this, which is actually include your um, Twitter handle in a tweet so they were talking directly to you and then of course your followers and your follower growth over the last 28 days so then when you scroll down it gives you a month by month breakdown of your top performing tweet and you can actually look at specifically everything that happened to it so how many people read it and then of course what happened to it and this will tell you a little bit more than you can get just from looking at your notifications. So you always know how many likes and retweets you get from your notifications. Media engagements means how many people clicked on the picture. And then hashtag clicks, of course, is if somebody clicked on one of these hashtags and then were taken to that larger conversation. Uh, you get a mention, you get top media tweet, which is your, your top tweet that included a picture or video or something and how it did and then your top follower based on their follower count. All right, so in the past, this is for March, so 20 days into March so far, the top follower is some foreign language. I don't even know. 
I guess that's Spanish, but <laughs> you're asking the wrong guy. Uh, and this account is followed by 37,000 people. The reason they tell you this is because if you pick up followers with big accounts and they retweet you, then of course your impressions rate goes through the roof. So you can scroll back month by month and it'll give you all of that same information on a month by month basis, including your impressions and profile visits. So very nice little overview there of everything uh, that your account has been doing. Now, if you want to uh, get a little more granular, you click on tweets. And you will come here and it will tell you on a tweet by tweet basis, every single thing that has happened to your account. Still trying to spin up the graph here. But it'll tell you everything that's happened to your account on a tweet by tweet basis. So as this impressions graph is still trying to render for some reason, it's hung up a little bit. But you can see as you scroll through what tweets have gotten. So you got three columns. You've got your impressions, which again is your, your exact readership, your engagements, which includes likes, retweets, favorites, uh, uh, likes and favorites are the same thing, uh, media clicks, hashtag clicks, link clicks, all those things are considered an engagement. And so all of those tweet by tweet are listed here. And then you have the engagement rate for each tweet. All right, so a note about your engagement rate. Twitter is a very, very different beast than Facebook when it comes to uh, engagements. On Facebook, you know, you can expect a 25% engagement rate, 35% engagement rate. That is unheard of on Twitter. The highest engagement rates, you know, the Coca Colas of the world have about a four to five percent engagement rate. Um, we run all the accounts for match.com out of Edge Theory, and theirs hangs around three and a half percent. So the average on Twitter is 0.1% engagement rate, which means 99.9% .9 of all tweets do not get liked or favorited. Now they get read, but Twitter is such a consumer heavy platform. People hop on, they search, they read, they hop off. They don't necessarily follow you. They don't necessarily uh, like or retweet you. But if your engagement rate is anywhere over 0.1%, then you're already busting the average. Uh, so this being almost at 2% is really stellar. And it'll tell you that on a tweet by tweet basis as well. So you can tell real quickly, you know, what tweets have done exceptionally well from a performance standpoint. Now, another uh, big thing here to pay attention to is link clicks. Now, keep in mind, if Soundboard is tweeting for you, we are frequently, not every tweet, but frequently sending out links to your Juice Plus site. Now, my understanding is your Juice Plus site, of course, will notify you if you get a sale, but it does not tell you your visitors. It does not tell you how many people landed there and got into the funnel, but just didn't complete the sale. So this is a, this is a good clue here to see are people clicking through. Now keep in mind, we do tweet out some articles and things like that. So some of those clicks can account for taking your readers to those articles. But a lot of times it's going to represent taking your readers to your Juice Plus site. So keep that in mind and that's a pretty good barometer of how many people you're actually getting there. And then of course it'll tell you, you know, your retweets, likes, and replies. So I find this uh, super helpful when I'm trying to figure out trends and what's done well. You can either scroll down and just see, you know, what numbers pop up uh, or what tweets pop up based on their performance and see if you can kind of get a trend line from that. Or, and I find this helpful because I'm a data nerd, you can export this to a CSV file and get every tweet, every single thing that happened to every tweet, and then you can sort it by the different columns and real clearly you can see what what trends pop out of the top tweets now the other very very interesting thing about what twitter will tell you is who your audience is and what they're interested in i guess we're having a little bit of internet hiccup and some of my graphs aren't rendering uh, but this is supposed to show your follower growth 
but check this out based on interests. Okay, so this is who follows your account, other things that they're interested in. So there's some things here that it would be hard for the Juice Plus Helper handle to talk about on a regular basis and not come across as, as being, you know, off, totally off topic. So I'm not going to spend too much time worried about talking about funny movies or music. Uh, some business, for sure, we would need to be talking about how do small business owners uh, exist in today's market, those kinds of things. Pop music, no thanks. Uh, but health, mind, and body, okay, a lot of our audience is interested in that. That pops out to me as obviously something, you know, we need to be talking about. Now, uh, this to me is helpful because we can tell who our audience is by gender, which means, of course, I need to be uh, putting content out that is having to do with healthy pregnancies, uh, nursing moms, you know, busy moms trying to feed kids in a healthy way, uh, all those types of topics. So uh, I know that I'm hitting my demographic. Now, uh, less helpful to me is people's income and um, occupation could be interesting, um, you know, but we would expect to see with, with uh, people who are, you know, Juice Plus that a lot of this kind of thing um, but this, I find this sticks out to me as very, very helpful. So consumer buying styles, truthfully, I don't know how Twitter knows this because you, you can technically buy stuff through Twitter, but that never really caught on like it did on Facebook. But check out what Twitter's telling me my audience is interested in buying. Okay. So this first thing is premium brands, which you might think is Louis Vuitton or whatever, but it actually says people who shop premium and high-end brands across the grocery store, which means my audience doesn't care that it costs more money to eat healthy and eat organic. Uh, and so that's what, where they're spending their money. That's overwhelming majority of my audience supposedly does that. They want fresh and healthy uh, food, fresh produce, fresh meats, healthier home solutions, home cooking and grilling, people who include meat and potatoes as menu staples, uh, so healthy grilling, need to be talking about that, especially as the weather gets warm. Quick and easy, people who choose heat and eat convenience, which may seem like fast food, but we also know, coupled with all of these other things, that it probably also means nutritious. Ethnic explorers, people who have a wide range of international foods on their shopping list. So we have some very distinguished, um, specific shoppers here who are very concerned about healthy, fast, premium, uh, probably organic, don't really care about price. That's certainly a great uh, audience to have. What an incredible you know, group of people to speak into, especially if you're trying to move <laughs> Juice Plus product, right? That's incredible. So uh, let, down the list here, we've got natural living, weight conscious, gluten-free, value conscience, and kosher of all things. Uh, so there's more information here. You can click around and, and they'll explode a little bit of this uh, for you. Of course, we could assume that English uh, language is the most important. This is all about education, where people live. Uh, this is helpful, of course, uh, if you've got, an, if you're building an audience or you're trying to you know, build a business in other countries. You know, Twitter is a worldwide platform apart from China. Of course, not everybody on Twitter speaks English, but even as we work with people who sign up for the soundboard out of the UK and mainland Europe, they say that a lot of people use English for social media because it's so um, ubiquitous across Twitter. So keep that in mind. A little bit of more information about home ownership and things like that. So anyway, I find this kind of stuff very interesting. This is a little bit more information about your buyers and what they are purchasing. And again, how Twitter knows, I don't know, but they're telling me with confidence that this is what people are interested in. So I'm going to, I'm going to lean on them for that information. So combine this with, um, knowing who your audience is, soundboard content, you know, you can search for content on soundboard along these lines and, you know, be talking about these kind of things on a regular basis to your Twitter audience. 
and um, you'll be hitting the nail on the head with that. Okay, so I just set a little slide for there. All right, so let's hop down to this. This is, we also, also covered that. Okay, lists. You know, uh, I think it was last week we talked about uh, Facebook groups and getting into these topical groups and prospecting through these warm market groups of people who are interested in certain things. So there's, there's somewhat of a parallel to that on Twitter and it's called a list, okay? For, from a consumption standpoint, lists make your life easier if you actually want to get news out of Twitter. Because if you go follow, I'm following 925 people, there's no way I could ever get a real sense of what's going on just by scrolling through my home feed. Because some of these 925 people tweet every five minutes, okay? <laughs> it's a little overwhelming. But what you can do is you can create lists based on topics that you're interested in and you can uh, categorize some of the people you follow into those lists. I don't ever look at my home feed because it's just fire hose information. I have things categorized into lists in my personal account. I have not taken the time to do this with this particular handle because I don't consume through it but I have uh, a news list set up and I follow all of my local news anchors because I need to know what's going on in Mississippi all the time because our roads are terrible and they close them and break them and anyway. So if I follow those people in a list in three minutes, I can find out everything that I need to know about what's going on in Jackson with our terrible water system and our terrible roads and I don't have to scroll and scroll and scroll. I have a list of all my bands that I love, so I never miss anybody who's on tour. And I have um, a list of just like big global news, you know, CNN, Fox, AP Wire, things like that, so I don't miss world news. I can know everything I wanna know about the world and the things that I care about in about 12 minutes or less based on those lists. It makes your life so much easier to create a list. I'm here at my uh, home profile. You see this button over here we've got lists. To create one, we've got create a new list. And I've made up some test ones here. Again, I don't really use this account well with lists. But you create one, whatever you want it to be, your news, your, you know, your healthy living people, your um, you know, gluten-free, whatever it is, make your list. And then you can set it to public or private. So this, these serve two purposes. If you want to do your team a huge favor, and especially if you have a, a team that's somewhat centrally geographically located, go create a list, a public list, and populate it with all of the Dallas, Texas, or wherever you are, farmer's markets and um, picky mom uh, support groups and, um, you know, um, nursing mothers and who, whatever else and put all those accounts that you can find into a list and then you can send that list around to your team and you can all subscribe to it. Okay, it's a pretty cool uh, way to, to do that. Or you can go follow a bunch of influencers in the healthy living world. Uh, you know, the Dr. Sears and those kinds of people in the world and create a healthy influencers list and share that with your team so that you're all you know, getting a lot of the same news. You can make a private list, of course, and this is just for you, and nobody else knows this list exists, and you can go follow whatever you want, um, and nobody else can subscribe to it. So either way, once you do that, you can go search for something. So let's look for Dallas, Texas, gyms. And I want to follow all of the gyms in Dallas. Let's see what's going on. So when we find something, all right, we've got this arrow button over here and we can do, oh, let's go, we got to visit her account. We're going to do this and we want to, over here, we have more user actions. This may be a terrible example, but we want to add to a list. And so you go through and you add it to that list and boom, it's done. Or you can create a new one right there. So now when we visit that list, 
we're seeing people who are talking about that specific topic, okay? Now, all of this I've been talking about from a consumer standpoint to make Twitter more manageable for you. But here's the, th the other thing about lists, is you, especially if you've been on Soundboard or been tweeting for a while, probably have been put on somebody else's list and you don't know it. So go to your lists and instead of doing subscribed to, which are ones that you listen to, click on member of. Um, I, this is so fun to, to watch people's eyes light up when they actually go and look at this for themselves for the first time because they have no idea that they've been put on these lists because this is not like asking permission to, to follow you if you have a locked account. Okay, people can just do this. But look at all these lists that this account has been put on. So now you have these places where you can go and you can subscribe to the list. You can listen to these people in here. So the way this works is, for instance, um, people who love Whole Foods, because <laughs> the D wouldn't fit, by Sandy. Sandy is the administrator of this list. Okay, she created it. She has put almost 5,000, uh, oh, wrong list. She's put almost 15, over 1,500 people in this list. So step one is, Go follow Sandy by all means because Sandy, she may not follow your account, but she's put you on a list. She wants to know what you have to say. And this again, where Twitter gets a little wonky. She doesn't have to follow you to put you on a list. So you may have never known that, you know, this happened or that she exists, but go subscribe to that list and then begin to uh, tweet at people in the list. So it's not like, a Facebook group when you put a post in a Facebook group and everybody in the group has the potential to see it. You know, Twitter doesn't behave that way. So it's not like when you tweet at Sandy that all 1500 people of the, of that are in the list will see it. But here are people who share the same interests who you can go follow and begin to interact with that way. Okay. So it's not a closed loop where you can just throw a message out and all these people will see it but you do have, somebody's already done the legwork for you for finding people who are interested in these topics, right? So everybody in this list by whatever this person's name is, she named herself weight loss, um, is a, talking about healthy recipes. Go follow some people talking about healthy recipes. They'll follow you back and Soundboard talks about healthy recipes for you. So you are contributing. Drink more water. Um, you know, you've got uh, healthy living friends. Uh, fitness fans. This was Juice Plus Conference last fall. Joe put it together for me so I could um, follow some people. So here's how you figure this out. If you don't see the lists button on your account, do this. Go to this site, type in, of course, HTTP, twitter.com slash your Twitter handle name. Okay, so just plug that in there and then do slash memberships. And even if your button's not there, I don't know why it doesn't always appear for people. Again, Twitter. But it'll show you all the lists that you're a member of and all these new potential people that you can connect with. And here, here's an incredible warm network to jump into with Twitter and to begin prospecting with. Go follow these people. By all means, follow uh, the people who are the admins on the list, and it's, and it's listed right here. Interact with them. Send them a tweet. Say, thank you for adding me uh, to your list. Have you got any you know, thoughts on XYZ health topic? Or it's National Nutrition Month. What are you doing? Uh, April, first week in April is National Healthy Kids Week, I think. Um, you know, bring up something like that and uh, see what you get and you will find uh, new connections are being made. So that is going to wrap us up for this fifth week of our social media training. Thanks so much for joining. Next week is the last week. We're going to talk about Buffer. We're going to talk about Hootsuite. We're going to talk about Instagram. We're going to talk about LinkedIn. And then you will be on your way 
you will not get a certificate in the mail from me, but you should that you have your bachelor's in social media. And then hopefully in the near future, we will have some news about your master's social media degree that you can get from Edge Theory, followed by your PhD. I'm currently working on it right now. So more info to come soon. I hope you have a great day. It's 88 degrees and sunny in Mississippi. And I think I'm going to go outside for a little bit. See you next week.